Good morning all, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, it's a pretty foggy morning. I'm out in a field of beans. Thought we'd just have a touch on that. We've made the most of the frost. So picking up on where we left off last week, we just drilled the last of our winter wheat. We managed to roll it this week, so pretty pleased with that. And after the event, the rollings left the field nice and smooth and we've managed to get our pre-M on as well. Um, the other thing we managed to do in the frost is we've pushed the first bit of our hedge up until we ran out of frost. It's a little bit difficult to see in the fog but the trees mark the hedge and as you can see uh, this is where the JCB with the muck grab brought the hedge up and it's all been stacked here and as you can see uh, soil damage hopefully surface damage is minimal in the frost and I'm not quite sure I had a contract to come in because I don't have a muck grab of my own and as you can see the line of this fence sort of goes through the middle of the heap so that might be a little bit of a challenge but Plenty of material here for the chipper to make a start on. So minimised the soil damage and uh, sort of got ready for the chipper. I also spent some time in London this week. I went to the CLA rural business conference uh, some good connections made there some interesting talk with my um, Dudley Peveril hat on is some interesting talk about uh, regenerative agriculture and acknowledging that there probably wasn't it wasn't a full-time job and that some estates were offering a part-time tenancy and we're getting a lot more ten tenant applications. And I think um, that is something that we are very conscious of here, that if we go for enterprise stacking, how do we bring motivated uh, new entrants in in order to run those enterprises uh, similar to Tim May at Kingsley Estate, I think it is. So uh, returning to this crop of beans, let's have a quick review. So overall, uh, did some benchmarking this week and a colleague commented that my early drilling had given him the confidence to push on with some early beans. When we're see saying early beans, that's the beginning of October, so it's not, you know, stupid early, but uh, relatively clean. A um, little bit of some volunteers, a little bit of black grass, but this hasn't had any post-emergence herbicides yet. The plant population looks good. I haven't put a square down to count it, but it's looking good. Um, and we did do some square counts in winter wheat a couple of weeks ago. So let's just uh, go back to those. And Afternoon everybody. Right, it's now later on Sunday afternoon and unfortunately it's blowing an absolute gale outside. So I'm just going to record this bit of video inside just in case the the sound quality is rubbish outside. But historically we've been really interested in seed rates and establishment rates and the difference between uh, direct drilled and cultivated ground. I was going to do a uh, establishment count on some light land this morning, but uh, I, I missed the opportunity. So I've come back to this heavy land. We've got two fields right next door to each other. One, uh, both after beans. One had some, because it capped, we just did a pass with the carrier just before drilling. So we've got a little bit more tilth. So I'm going to do a plant. If I can, I'm going to do three counts. One after cover crops. The second one... Uh, in a where there's been a little bit more movement on the surface we've had a pass with the carrier and then three in a straight direct drilling system so using my trusty square behind me we'll just pull up so we'll take a picture of the square 
we'll just pull up a plant to see how many leaves we're talking for an individual plant and then finally we'll take the pictures back to the office and do a plant count to try and work out what our establishment rate is so uh hopefully we'll get some good footage outside right see you out there so our first stop is the field after cover crop and here is the square and we'll just dig up a plant here hopefully we can pull this up hard doing this single-handed this one is three leaves and this one is three leaves so we're going to go for a three leaf count when we go back to the square second field cultivations after beans square down and here we've got the uh, digging tool well there we go nice easy three leaves there that guy's also got three leaves this guy three leaves so we'll go with three here's the square it's worth saying that this field the cultivated field definitely walks wetter than the previous field after cover crop it's quite noticeably wetter a bit squelchy underfoot so pushing on to the last field the just straight direct drilling after beans unfortunately this probably isn't the fairest example because this field is one of our difficult ones uh, it doesn't it just doesn't seem to perform and as you can see um, I'm not sure if you can catch in the light but the the rows are quite clear over here but as we move round, we've got quite a barren patch in the middle of this field where as you can see up to the headland where there's a wet patch which has died off but this is classic slug damage as we look down um, I can't actually see any immediate slug damage I think the damage has already been done there is a bit of thinning of the leaf you can see stripping of the leaf but I did find some plants earlier that had just been cut off um, but it's just it's just not great something like that see pretty pretty unhealthy um, here's a good example this guy so here's our square here well, I'd say that's three, three, um, three. It's definitely a little bit further behind, more like two and a half rather than three. But we'll take a picture and uh, count at home. So I've got my thousand grain weight calculator and the certificate which says my thousand grain weight is 54. So if we go over here, um, and we adjust it here so there's 50 so 54 is going to be about there and then we can read down so my seed rate was 200 kilos which gives me a seed per meter squared of three 350 seeds per meter squared so my square is half a meter by half a meter so it's a quarter of a square meter so we multiply the plant count by four to get the number of plants per meter squared so the first field where we direct drilled into the cover crop we achieved a leaf count of 186 giving us a plant count of 62 giving us 248 plants per meter squared a 71% establishment rate. The second field, um, unusually, uh, that had a carrier the day before we drilled it, the leaf count was 
101, plant count 33, plants per metre squared 132, giving an establishment rate of 38. And finally, the field that was just direct drilled into double rate beans, leaf count of 182, plant count of 60, plants 240 per metre squared, giving an establishment rate of 68%. It is worth saying that I panicked a little bit after this direct drilling, and actually we went back through afterwards with the weeder and just scratch the surface a little bit to uh, try and cover the seed. So really it looks as if that has paid dividends. Morning, it's Sunday morning and uh, behind me is some X mustard conventional system grazed by sheep, uh, monoculture of mustard. As you can see, they've taken it right down now. Um, the understory it's got some volunteers, some weak volunteers in it, but you've still got plenty of residue and they haven't you know, squished it down too much. There's not too much surface compaction. However, this is, this is the first year we're going to be trialing the Terra Blade, the Claydon Terra Blade. So specifically on this chalk land, but for the spring crops in general, the real challenge has been generating enough crumb in a spring drilling situation that uh, you get a good germination rate. So we could come through here with a carrier and cut it up, but the, that's too much ground movement. So we're quite interested. We had a look uh, a couple of videos back. We did a lot of research in the summer into Kelly Harrows and uh, Dalbo make a competitor product. Uh, really, it came down to expense. And so we've decided to go for a Claydon Terra Star as well. One of the points was that we thought we could get out of it relatively cheaply rather than it's like a 60 grand investment if you're going to go for a, uh, for a Kelly Harrow even at sort of six meters so uh, hopefully going forward if we get another we have to s survive uh, Christmas turkeys that's our focus for this week but going forward if we get past that into another frosty period we're looking to come out here and uh, get the terror blade going for the first time so uh, sheep out of this field a little video of sheep in next door when the mustard's still flowering see you next time so thank you very much please give this video a thumbs up subscribe click on the little bell to get notifications see you next time bye